Okay, the session is live on YouTube. Thank you all again for joining the 57th session of NLG. We've been doing this for the last one year and it's a great honor and it's all possible because of the continuous audience backup and uh, trusting us with uh, continuous participation and thanking all again from the bottom of my heart. Uh, we are focused on bringing new speakers, new topics, interesting topics. And for the last 57 webinars, or 56 webinars in fact, uh, we have been working on different uh, topics and different areas of uh, development and personal skills and uh, personality developments, communication. In fact, we have been able to cover the niche subjects as well, like uh, yoga, uh, vastu and all. So it's been a great honor for uh, hosting the 57th uh, webinar, especially for me. Today's uh, webinar is uh, titled Communication in Digital Era, which is very essential. And we have a specialist speaker on this as well today. Uh, as we go forward uh, before before proceeding, thank you for all your registrations with us in different platforms. And uh, a small brief uh, intro about NLG. NLG started in 2019 with uh, these two professionals on board. Uh, Sushma, uh, she is an HR professional. Uh, she's an HR professional. She is an NNP master practitioner. She's passionate about human touch. And she's working very hard to create positive impacts uh, on people's uh, potential. Uh, people potential and unleashing their potential in fact and creating positive difference within them so uh, she is all about hr and if you have any hr queries and uh, how to develop your skills you can directly approach her through whatsapp through facebook through linkedin she's available everywhere uh, myself my name is jason abraham i'm also co-founder and helping sushma to build this community i'm a supply chain professional um, i was working with a government institution as an internal auditor for the last five years uh, currently, I'm consulting. I'm also into consulting in utilities, oil and gas, energy, and healthcare on uh, procurement, demand planning, etc. So I'm a certified ISO standard lead auditor as well. And you can see my traditional credentials on my LinkedIn profile as well. Uh, going forward, we have two people which, who are uh, constantly being uh, involved in the different activities and they're helping us uh, in the background. Thank you, Dinte Parambil and Anil Kunuku. Anil Kunuku is an HR professional. And he's again an NLP master practitioner. He's a coach and mentor. He's a Toastmaster. And he is uh, involved with the Singapore based universities to mentor students as well. Uh, thank you, Din Teparambil. It's a QHC professional and entrepreneur. And he's an MBA in HRMS in biotechnology. And he, these are the two guys who are responsible for uh, developing uh, the strategies for NLG. Uh, NLG is focused on three what, uh, main intentions. Uh, one is to network, one is to learn and share knowledge. These are the three things which are, we are focused on as a group. And uh, we are working in two verticals. One is NLG League and NLG Career. NLG League is all about uh, educating, learning and sharing experience. NLG Career is all about uh, sharing vacancies from different uh, sources. Uh, we are, although we are not associated with any recruitment agency, but still we are helping professionals to find the correct jobs uh, through sharing the vacancies. You can connect with us through different uh, platforms, Facebook, WhatsApp, Telegram, and LinkedIn, and we are shortly starting our YouTube channel as well. There are some ground rules to follow, but all those, although the speaker would be very happy to have an interactive session, but there are some ground rules to follow to avoid disturbances. Please always uh, mute your audio. If you would like to chat, if you would like to raise any questions, you can uh, use the chat box. You may raise your hands if you want to ask any questions. Uh, there would be a Q&A session at the end of the session. Uh, you may take notes or screenshots as you require. Uh, these are some of the last uh, webinars which we were successfully conducted uh, for the last 57 webinars. We have been successful in conducting different webinars on different subjects. Now, today's speaker, it's a great honor to welcome Ms. Christine Filomena on board and uh, she's a great speaker and uh, her credentials is on the screen. She's a co-founder and CEO of Philippine Business School. She's a member of the Governance Board of Philippine Institute of CPAs, PICPA Dubai chapter. She's a level three certificate in leadership, ILM, which is accredited in London. Uh, she's a resource speaker of Philippine Business School. She is passionate uh, in sharing knowledge, advocating experimental, experiential learning. She is a former president of the Philippine Institute of CPAs and a former internal audit manager of Altair Group. So we are happy and honored to welcome Ms. Christine and the stage is all yours. Thank you so much for joining the session.
Uh, Christine, you're on mute currently. All right. Okay. Can you all hear me now? Yes. All right. Thank you, Jason, for that introduction. And it is such an honor to be part of uh, today's event. Thank you, Sushma. You've been very relentless following up since last year. <laughs> But I really congratulate you guys. It takes a lot of passion and um, dedication to have these kind of programs going. So we are not very different from our advocacies. Um, I'm currently also very active in the community. Uh, core object, our core objective is really to create as many people that could be as successful uh, as they can be by unleashing the potentials. And in the process, you are also, we are also in, you know, improving ourselves. The more we think of the needs for other, of others, we also improve on um, the things that we have. So, which is such a gift. And every weekend is also a very busy day for us. So, in fact, today, um, everyone is celebrating the Philippine Independence Day. <laughs> it's June 12. So, Happy Independence in the Filipino Day. community. <laughs> Yes, and thank you. I am from home, but I have a very nice background. So I hope everybody's fine. Krishna, Vivek, Hania, Abu Bakr, Juri, earlier yet, Saji and Charmin. Um, thank you, and I hope I can really share today. Yes, um, I can share today th this passion that I, um, th that really, you know, really anchored me. So Without much ado, I'd like to share my screen. Yes, uh, I want this to be interactive. I want everybody to um, raise your questions. I could read your questions and then we could move on. We can elaborate. And there are a lot of things that are related to communication. Therefore, I would like to ask also our NLP experts to join in and give your opinion as well. Would that be okay? Yes? yes. Okay. Thank you. So... I've prepared my presentation on uh, Canva. All right, so I hope that's clear. You can see my screen. Wonderful. So communication in the digital era, what's in it for us? And what does an internal audit practitioner got to do with communication in the digital space? Totally not my expertise, to be honest with you. It is something that I am very passionate with because as I said, yeah, we use passion so many times. Um, that's because being into internal audit, you communicate with a lot of people across different spheres, different levels in the organization. And having been in the internal audit practice, I have seen um, how uh, digitalization has helped, uh, improved, and enabled people to be more accountable in how they communicate. So... I'd like to walk us through on what's in it for us. So most of the perspective is coming from my personal opinion, something from experience, and something that I have learned through the ILM. So the ILM was something that I have a training certification that I've got while I was part of Altair Group. I think Shushma has gotten it as well. And it was really more about doing your leadership on a face-to-face -face interaction. But now it's a very challenging space because there's already a lot of digitalization involved. So what is communication? What's in it for us, for our work, for home and education? And by the way, I am a mother of three and um, I'm working half at home and half at, um, in the office. And I am also a teacher for my kids who are homeschooled. So I know a lot of you can relate about the transition that we all have to go through when distance learning and home learning has become a trend. Yeah, so we'll touch base about that one today. Okay, let me proceed. So communication is central in how we live, but because communication is so digitally done today, we tend to lose how to use it naturally. So I just want to focus for all of us right now. Uh, what has changed? Can we can we ponder about the transition? I think most of us are of the same age. We are parents to young children. During our time, 
uh, Jason had mentioned about the cassette tapes that we all have to put our pens in and do the rewind. When you used to play music and everyone in the house can hear it, even the neighborhood can hear it. But now it's so isolated, right? Everybody can just be prefer what they want to hear. You would not even hear what your children are listening. Some people are sharing at a dining table, but then they fail to communicate. You see families in the restaurants, they don't talk to each other. They're just looking at their iPads. They're just looking at their phones, right? We think that we are digitally connected, but the use of communication as it is naturally designed for social beings is sometimes often missed. So it's sometimes and often. What a contradictory, right? So I think right now there are a lot of paradoxes that we have to encounter, we have to face. But more than that, what we need to look into ourselves, being the bridge of these communication styles that we have witnessed over our lifetime. Right? So I'm on my early 40s. Most of you can relate to where I am at the stage of my life. So let us look at where most of our times are spent, which is at work. And what are those things that we have, we have pondered? Maybe you could relate with me. Feel free to make your comments as we go through. Okay. So this is our work and stress mood. Sometimes my husband works late at night and um, he's working at home and he cannot separate um, the workload from you know, like spending time with us. I wish at the time when before COVID, he would have to leave his work, come home, even if he's home late, at least he's with us physically, mentally, and digitally. <laughs> Sometimes um, kids would wonder whether they can talk to their dad or they could talk to me while we are at home because we need our space. So these are a few of our challenges. Weekends used to be a time with family, but now home and work has become one. And it ends like this. You know, kids are just sitting by while we are on our laptops. I think um, we owe our kids and our family two hours of our time today while we are learning. So I hope we could also guard our time after this, right? So as most of you, like me, we work from home, we have our time, we, we talk and interact digitally to our peers, to our subordinates, to our bosses. Over the days, have you felt ob obliged and have the fear of missing out? You agree with me? You yes. have the fear of missing out. Yes. Like, oh, maybe my boss sent me a message. You know, you don't know right now whether there's a WhatsApp message or an email message or a, a messenger message or something from Teams. Earlier, we have to knock on the doors to book an appointment to talk to somebody. If there are critical information that we need to share, we have to grow, go through a lot of bureaucracy. We ask the secretary, can I go in? I have to discuss certain tech. That's it. right, Jason. It's a gap. It is really a gap. Um, but Technology is here to stay and it is supposed to, to help us improve in our life. So going back, my, my, our objective today is how do, we, how do we become effective as communicators? Um, we will talk about how we journey and what is the right way to effectively communicate. This is based from a practitioner's uh, perspective, but I want you guys to like, feel free. I can see your messages and it's overwhelming. I want you to give comments about what are your insights and if you share the same views as I do, right? So over this digital era, you know, people have moved into um, sending a message online for an order. How many of us would actually say thank you to the delivery man that knocks at our door? How many of us, oh, thank you. And they deserve that recognition. Have you reserved a bottle of water for those people who are traveling in the heat to deliver food for you and say thank you to them? 
Before, when we order, we have to stay on the queue in a restaurant, wait for our time at the counter to pay, right? When some food is delivered on our table, we say thank you. But now because, exactly, because like everything is digital, oh, leave it at our doorstep, right? People deliver at our doorstep. We have to clean them up. We have COVID issues and stuff, but they are also people. So why am I saying this? There's so many things that we've missed out. And I hope today's session would bring us into a certain realization that sometimes we take for granted. Okay, so we go back into tech at work. As a professional, um, for me, looking at it, there are a lot of great things, great um, opportunities, some, some things that is beyond our imagination for what technology has brought into our lives. Earlier, it's a longer time, you know, like you have to wait, book an appointment for, for somebody, right? Now you could just look up into their outlook, their schedules, everybody's mandated to share their calendars. Communication is much faster. Earlier, everything is on paper. I remember when I was doing audit with HR, I have to ask permission to go to the passport room. And Shushma used to ask, give me access to go into the passport room and check. And I'm not allowed to bring the passport out from that room. And it's closely um, covered in CCTV. Now, passports are scanned. If you ask somebody for a copy of the passport, here you go. In minutes, it's available. Right? Well, I'm from the audit, so you guys are not actually directly, you know, going to request for passports. But what I'm trying to say here is digital space has totally changed the way we work. And it's much, much easier. Right? So um, in the digital, in the workspace, I just want to emphasize how can we be more effective uh, in communication in this digital era without really losing sense and objective and the humanity that has to be there whenever we communicate. So one of my learnings and, um, and the GDP, the Global a Group Development Program that we have is to be able to read body language. Dressing up for success. You know, how many of you right now are actually on shorts and PJs on your lower but having a formal top? How many of us are coming in a meeting on a formal suit on top, but being having shorts also and, and like have, changing your background, your background would just be maybe the wardrobe, right? And we just change it digitally. Awesome. So 90%, thank you for that. <laughs> but that's how it is. That's how reality is. But that's, uh, Flamino, that's a really actually, change. Uh, yes. We are concentrating more on our backside. We are not concentrating on our own. <laughs> what is the backdrop we have to have? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, backdrop. <laughs> the backdrop covers it all anyway. Yeah, that's the beauty of digital. You can actually change and augment reality. Right? Yeah. Change reality. But um, as, as I said, the, our focus is really... There are so many things that we want to look pleasing in the eyes. And yeah, so our, our virtual reality can change that. But the humanity in communi communication has to stay. So yeah, I have a few keywords that I want to focus on, and it spells digital. Let me be more simple about it. Um, okay. Okay, so D stands for direct and unambiguous. So I'm talking and focusing on how we communicate when we do use our emails, when we have our WhatsApp, when we have on whatever platforms. Keywords that is key, a uh, rule of thumb for me is like be gracious. If you are the recipient of that communication, would, would, you, would that message make you smile as a greeting? Do not go directly with, where is this? What have you done? And all that. Because you sound to be um, demanding. You don't know what the other person uh, has been up to. Next, state the purpose and the objective. We need to be more direct and unambiguous at this time. 
earlier on our physical contact and um, face-to-face -face interaction, we used to exchange the pleasantries. How are you? How's your family life and stuff? But when we are sending emails, we go straight to the purpose and the objective. We focus on big concerns, the questions, and we answer the whys. We focus on why am I sending this message to you? What do I need from you? That is because I think right now we are more focused on productivity and times, everybody's time is important. So whenever we send corporate communication, we need to be direct and unambiguous. But one thing I have learned is being an audit, I have to interact with a lot of people. I start with a call, build my relationship. If it's okay to have teams, you know, have a face-to-face -face meeting and say, I will be sending you an email regarding this matter. So even if you're direct and you focus on your clear objective, that other person immediately understands what you need from that person, you know, the call to action. But in the emails, be direct and unambiguous. Why? Because from an audit perspective, your email communications can become an audit evidence of the communication that transpired, right? But secondly, um, your communication is intended to inform or to get information. So we need to be careful about the information that we are trying to convey. So it, for us, it is important to know who is our audience. What are we trying to inform? So when we are sending to the CXOs, to the SVPs, what is it exactly that they want to know? You don't have to go beating around the bush. If it is a direction that you need to give to your um, staff, your subordinates, it has to give them guidance. That it's clear to them what you intend what you intend to happen, what you're expecting from them. That information is very crucial and knowing your audience is one of the essential areas that you have to think of before you frame any communication that goes into the digital space. Agree with me? Yes? Okay. Because a lot of people would just send um, information and I think it's very informal for somebody to send a message with if you don't have a personal relationship to another person without really informing if it's okay that I have shared your mobile number to this other person right if Shushma had shared the message to of, of the, e the number of Jason to me Jason's number is a personal number I hope Shushma had asked permission from Jason that he will have to share. <laughs> or Shushma asked my permission that she will share my number to Jason. You know, while communication is easily at our fingertips, we should not forget that we had don't we should not bypass somebody's privacy. Right. And I have to inform him that I got your number from Shushma. I got your information from somebody. So that that person wouldn't feel that somebody all, out of a sudden by surprise just called him. Anyway, in Dubai, you would just receive calls from different banks. You don't know where your numbers were taken. <laughs> Agree with me. <laughs> so in any case, in any case, what I'm trying to say is um, it is important that our you ask yourselves before you send an information, you know, before you're sending your message. What is it that I want to inform this person about? Don't beat around the bush because you don't have the liberty, just like, you know, talking to the person over the phone or face to face that you go and explain and, you know, elaborate on a lot of things. Make sure that you're not, your message is not lost um, across all the words that you are sending. Okay. So going back, first one is direct and unambiguous. Second is informative. Yeah. Next is generational. Generational. Why is this important? Be cautious that digital information can be understood, interpreted, and perceived based on generational mindset and perception. In my culture, in the Philippines, 
um, whenever we send a message and we we don't use po and opo, is for you is g right g uh, g by and right correct you agree <laughs> am i using the right word yes in hindi in hindi so, yeah shushma g and uh, so and um, jason by you know if if you don't use this um, keywords you would be perceived as um disrespectful yeah it's a respect sign sometimes true yeah and, and, and sometimes whenever you address something to uh, an er elderly or someone who's more senior than you are be cautious about how your message would be perceived you have to read it from that other person's shoes is it clear yes i hope it's very clear um Sometimes uh, when I send message, Sahab. Okay, thanks, Haji. Okay, Sahab. Achahe. All right. So it's genera generational. When we communicate to uh, yuppies, because in the in the young young professional groups, uh, it's okay for them to be more direct, right? First name basis, and you you speak directly, and you even have shortcuts in in your spelling. Why are you there? So you would just have the text. And it's it's okay, but send it to somebody more senior, and they say, "What's going on with you?" <laughs> right. So let's be more um, cautious about it. So they they have uh, I've been done doing a lot of reading, you know, like the baby boomers, which are my dad's time, you know, the Generation X, the millennials, the post millennials, and you have the alpha generation. So the alpha generation, which is our children's generation, go straight to the point because these people have very, very short patience. You know, they're so used to like, oh, okay, it's loading, move. You know, they tuck, 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 change. So if you're a leader or you are a manager and most of your teams are the younger generations, which is a little have more patience than the alpha group right now, but they're they're used to just tell tell me directly what you need to do. I'll do it. But if you go beat around the bush, they'd lose it and leave. Right. So I think it is very important where we are because our generation has more patience. We have gone through the times when we have to wait for the bus to come. There's no Uber that would tell you come out from your gate now because we are here outside. No, right? Those times that we have, you have to wait for somebody to come home. You don't know exactly when they, your parents would be home. Now you know when your parents are, they have their tracker. Your parents would, uh, us as parents, if we have trackers in our children, we know exactly when they'd be home. Who are they with? Right. Send your location. I want to know where you are. That's digital space. But when we communicate, I think respect should always be honored. So for me as a parent, I would always remind my children that this is how you address me. Whenever there's a need for you to communicate with me, sometimes they would just send, because uh, in our home, we have the second floor. They send me a Skype. Mama, I need help. Because <laughs> we are on homeschooling. I said, come over, I'm in the room. Why, why do you have to send me a WhatsApp message or a Skype message? Alpha generation, right? Sometimes we lose the physical touch. Okay, so inclusive. Why is inclusivity very important? I have seen so everybody must have could relate to this, but in the digital space, do not forget to be inclusive. Earlier, communications are exclusive. It has to be discussed within the four walls of the room, and it's between you and me. Right, but in corporate communication, we need to be inclusive. This is where racy matrix gets involved. The person that you send the message to, and you're expecting action, that is your addressee. Right, those that are on CC are those that you want to be informed as well. You're right, Jason. We need to have that transparency, and besides. Being inclusive makes you, as a communicator, open to what's actually happening. 
And on that sense, you take more accountability on what is expected from you and what actually happened. This is also very important in the recent um, you know, activities and happenings across the globe. A lot of people uh, lost their job, right? Earlier, if I may remember, um, when I have to do my end of service and I need to meet somebody and discuss with him and sign off the document, submit my document, that person comes and reminds me about what's happening, right? And what's the update of my end of service. Now, you have to inform two or three people also who are equally accountable of the task that you're supposed to do. Why? Because you'll never know tomorrow you might lose your job. Sorry, but this is what had been happening. So people are on CC because they need to also be inclusive. But what am I uh, driving at here? Now the accountabilities are not exclusively for you and on you. That's why sometimes, and most of the times, our communications have to involve the people who we work with. So that your boss, your manager, your colleagues who are part of the team, part of the project are involved and, and know what's going on. While it's sad as a reality, but this is something that we need to face. I know it's cliche when people would say, nobody is indispensable in an organization. But I think right now it really amplifies much louder. Do you agree with me? Yes. So let's take accountability also. For me as a practitioner, I would not know when I would lose my job or keep my job. The company will always be stable. But if tomorrow somebody would tell me that today is your last day, there's nothing I can do. But at least on all the activities that I have done, I've involved those other people who are part of the communication. And even without me, they could still go on. Therefore, I shared my accountability. Although I may be responsible to execute certain things, but being inclusive, inclusive in your communication ensures that you have all the right people involved. Okay. I agree with you, Jason, and the documentation and tracking, right? So I think now more than ever, coming into the digital space, we don't anymore have the printouts that are being filed and the sequential orders and stuff. Everything is being done digitally. Now our communications, even, our, even WhatsApp, is enough to have a screenshot sent, attached in an email, and it becomes an evidence, right? But yes, you agree. You On this date at this time, there's a timestamp of what's happening. Right. So sometimes even your personal communication, like if I, you send an information to somebody and you would say, this is just between us, you could easily take a snapshot and send it across to your boss or to whoever that person likes. So why not make it more formal, more inclusive, so that there is transparency and there is proper uh, disclosure and things, right? So be inclusive rather than exclusive and therefore be consistent on your communication. So I think on this note, I want to also emphasize the integrity, you know, the integrity of our actions, integrity of our messages. Okay. Next, so digital. So we are done with D-I-T. Oh, I skipped with a T. Okay, so I jumped into appropriate. What is T? T is timeliness. Why is timeliness very important? Timeliness and time efficient. So I'm so sorry. I think my copy has skipped on T. So let's just discuss what is time efficient. Communication as it is, is important, right? And, and we all agree, everything can just happen in, in a flick of a second, the moment I press send. Half a second, millisecond, real time. But it's also important that you acknowledge Time. Yes, Rushma. Sorry, Christine, I see your screen on A, which is appropriate. Yes. Um, actually, I skipped the slide on time. See, I was looking for it as well. No worries. Sorry. Okay. okay. I <laughs> yes, yes. I, I think the, the file that I have saved has skipped the T. So time efficient is more very important. 
and timeliness of our response. So uh, I work from I work for uh, a nonprofit organization, and we have all volunteers. And you know, when you have volunteers, like people's time is free. You send a message, and nobody would even say yes, okay, acknowledge, uh, will be there or noted. Silence, silence. That's a problem in the digital in the communicate. Uh, sorry, communication in the digital space. You would not, yes, you would not even know if that person has read your message, although clearly there's a double check that says it's been read. How difficult it is to say, okay, noted, acknowledged, right? So I hope no matter where that communication comes from, you give that acknowledgement. The timeliness, it's not just about doing our work, being productive. Timeliness also means how, how often we have acknowledged um, the communication that is being sent to us. Just because you are on CC, right? You are informed. Doesn't mean that you don't have the responsibility over what's happening. Sometimes it's also important that you ask, what's the progress? What's happening? How can we, how can I help? What are you expecting from my role on this? When we send WhatsApp, when, when you ask somebody for help and nobody responds to you, it is, um, it is very, you know, like sometimes the sound of silence is so deafening. Um, it would have been better if I, you have that person face to face and you would know that he's interested or not interested, right? But if you don't have a timely response, you, you'd lose it, you'd lose it. And sometimes it, it would be best if you are on the you know, advantageous shoes, but if you're the one that is on the shoes that needs help, needs support and needs a feedback, how would it feel, right? The bosses feel they don't need to acknowledge. I agree with you on that. But my boss, uh, well, he's younger. Um, he, he makes time. And I think uh, if we are leaders in our organization, I still believe the tone from the top. We create the culture in the organization that we nurture. So if it is important for us to have that acknowledgement as leaders in our organization, you have to exhibit the same attitude as well. Yes, definitely. So if how we behave towards others, it's, it, it, it is a reciprocation of, of how you behave towards them, right? So, uh, and I hope uh, a timely feedback is something that we keep in mind. Even from now on, although to be honest with you, when I receive messages on Facebook and you have the likes, oh, you look gorgeous, happy for the kids. Well, to be honest, I don't have the time. I don't really have the time to acknowledge everyone one and, and acknowledge the comments. But sometimes I do the thumbs up and stuff. But if it is for work and you see it's something personal, especially if it's um, a DM, uh, a PM for you, uh, that means that person have you in his thought when the communication was sent. Have a timely response. Next is um, A. So now I'm moving to A. So sorry, I lost the A. But after brief, so write info to the right people. Know the right platform to use. Okay, Jason, the problem with seeing everyone is Okay, let me read the message. I think it's very interesting what you said, Jason. Hang on. Oh, how come I cannot read all the messages? Jason, you can read. You can uh, read so that she she knows. Yeah, what yeah. Okay. Oh, Christine, I was about to say that if you are uh, ceasing everybody who is also not related to the issue, then again it's a problem. Yes. Rather <laughs> than ceasing the right person. Exactly. So that, that is, we need to be, this is now where uh, the message comes, appropriate, the right info to the right people. Okay. So we need to be, we talked earlier about being time efficient. So do not CC the entire world 
if they don't need to be involved. Give the right information to the right person because other people who are not actually part of the communication doesn't know the objectives, the focus, and, and, and what's the communication for might misconstrue the data that is being shared. And remember, if your name comes with it, you cannot remove your name out from it, right? So use the right platform. If I need to call and clarify before I would send a formal email or a communication, then I might as well do so. Right? In, my, in the culture where I'm in, on the, the organization, protocol is very important. So um, I work in a governing body and it's important that I don't breach that protocol. I could not send directly to my director without going through the person below that person. Right? And if I have to send a direct message to the director, I need to CC that other person, you know, or inform her that, is it okay that I would send this message directly or would you, would you rather send it? Why? We should not bypass communication, you know? Like, just, just think how would you feel if other people would step over you? Yes, Jason, hierarchy. That's something that we need to respect. I'd rather call it protocol. It's a uh, uh, while we respect, you know, the hierarchy and the levels. Communication becomes so direct, so real time that for other people, no one is stopping them from sending this directly. But the question is, is it appropriate? Okay. So always look at the appropriateness of the communication and the right tools and platform that you deliver your message to. I hope everyone agrees with me on this, right? Okay. So from a from, uh, practitioner's perspective, internal audit practitioner, we always have the RACI matrix, responsible, accountable, consultant, and informed. Okay. Now, what's the difference? <laughs> Saving one's chair and job, that's true. So the person, the person responsible is the one who executes the action. That should be the person you send it to. Right. So when when we send a message, uh, the call to action is what are you expecting him to do out of this message? That is your racy matrix responsible, accountable, the person who is ensuring that that action or that responsibility is executed. The supervisor, the manager, the colleagues are supervising that person who's responsible. Those are the people you need to CC. Clear? Yes, those that are consulted and informed are actually nominal persons, meaning they don't necessarily, uh, they're not necessarily part of the process, but if they are consulted on that process, please make sure, yes, please make sure that they have, they are also informed that as discussed with or as consulted with or advised by Jason, I'd like to cascade the following information or instruction, right? And then you include that person on the CC. I hope it's clear. Yes. That is also to ensure there is transparency and consistency in the communication. Okay, I think I'm talking a lot. I only have 45 minutes. So, um, and lastly on L, it's linked, linked. We're talking digital. So honesty is the best policy. Remember, all communications exchanged digitally can be shared, snapshot, snipped, copied. Oh, yeah, shared. Information is linked even to your own personal brand. Right. So I hope on the digital space, I've put in the right summary that would always remind us communication in the digital era reminds us to be more human and more considerate. All right, cool. So any comments, suggestions, violent reaction so far? All right, so. I think it's pretty clear for everybody. Very clear, thank you so much. Okay, so effective communication in the home space. Why am I sharing this? Uh, I'm also active in the couples for free. So I'm a Christian, a Catholic, uh, and it's, um, I'm a mentor, by the way, on um, in couples, and it's important that we, 
in sure and we believe yeah, i i know you guys we share the same faith and belief that the family is the building block of of the society now if we are not balanced in our family life if we lose our sanity while we are into all this digital space um we, we, we might lose the balance in the world as well. So just allow me to walk through very quickly about sanity. What I think is, it's and everything is more of my personal opinion. Keeping up with sanity in the home space. So I have summarized them for safeguard, adopt, need for physical interaction. Sorry for the misspelled words. Innovative, the need for travel, and YOLO. You only live once. So in summary, just want to focus that while everything, communications come in digital space, safeguard your space and safeguard your time. Yes. So um, safeguard your space and safeguard your time. Uh, I want to share with you what is a very, and I think it's very important as parents that what we do at home. So my, I always respect my husband being the, the head of the family uh, but we have to agree what should be the rules in the family now one of our fundamental rules the moment we arrive home all gadgets should be down and the kids would come and uh, we have a culture of kissing the hand in the in philippines the filipino culture so we kiss the hand of the parents and we acknowledge them or we hug them or the kids would have to put down their gadgets and hug, leave the TV and hug and welcome whoever comes at the door. We safeguard our space. Whenever we are at the dinner table, it's a policy, all phones, no phone should be at the dining table, that's it. Because dinners and, and meal times is supposed to be shared with everybody talking to each other. Now, if as parents, we have the FOMO, the fear of missing out, we lose guard of what is very critical for us, right? So 15 minutes of family time, just 15 minutes. That's how, that's not a average time we spend on eating, right? So safeguard that time so that your kids would learn I can only dream of them. I agree with you. I have a lot of friends who cannot separate. But um, this is what I have learned. We are created, you know, by God to be parents. And we have the purpose of how we should be as parents. So while we can exercise the not the control, but an influence on our children, we have to uh, exercise it. My son, at three years old, he learns reading. He doesn't even know how to hold the pen because he was watching the starfall.com. I was just surprised one day he was reading the, the book. I was so happy. I was so elated. Who could have a three-year-old who could read the book fluently? But then um, our normal tendency is, yeah, okay, let him have the iPad. Let him have the computer because my son is very smart, right? And I think most of us have fallen into the prey of having the nanny iPad. Have the nannies as our iPad because the kids get entertained. And therefore, whenever we pull out that gadget from them, there's already the separation anxiety. Now that they share the dinner table with us, we have difficulty not putting the TV along on the side. But guys, fellows, we lived our lives without these things our children can live without those as well. Coco melon, I agree, I have my children. <laughs> yes, so Coco melon also has very good values. But safeguard your space and safeguard your time. I think it's very important. Um, my kids, as I said, my kids are homeschooled. So most of the times they share, they use, we use the dinner table for their computers and their laptops. But if it's meal time, everything has to be cleared, all right? Next is adopt. Adopt to change and accept areas where you need to improve. So going back with generational communication gap, we need to adopt also. Uh, uh, in our homes, if there's a need for us to be more adaptable, do it. If you cannot control your Wi-Fi, do you know that technology would allow you to select which websites your children can, can go into? 
it has a technology that would allow you to stop the Wi-Fi whenever you want to. So learn, you adopt, uh, you embrace technology also in helping our children and our homes be guarded from you know, things that could corrupt our, our values. Next is the need for physical interaction. So look into an opportunity for you to be sociable to your kids. What, what are we good for when the entire community sends you like, appreciates you, you look good, fantastic, whatever, you're, you're, you're exemplary at your job. But when we come home, the crystals that is very important to us have lost touch, right? So be, identify your need for physical interaction. Next is be innovative in your use on time and technology. So uh, I bring my children to coffee shops when I have to work, but I would also give them an opportunity to do something else. We change. Travel. Travel is a need for us to move around. And lastly, YOLO. Keeping your home space, uh, your space is important. So you, because we only lived once, savor the moment and don't let technology bring you to places and you're, you're actually stuck at home. Also, by the way, um, we are all into Netflix. I know that. I never knew about watching TV until COVID, but I got really addicted with, with you know, binge watching. Um, maybe sometimes we need to ask ourselves, uh, is this really worth spending our time? Okay. And then, so like in summary, Keep our sanity, keep a time and space for work, respect your personal space and connections, and spend time with people who matter most. The last part is in education. Here are some tips in homeschool education. So um, before education is coming to school, you know, taking the bus and the kids go and come home from school, they talk about what's happening in school. Now, because of COVID and all the changes and the digital platforms available, things can just be done at home, right? So we have the distance learning when kids are actually learning on a classroom setting, but digitally, right? We have homeschooling, which is something that I am into with my kids and everything is purely on digital, uh, the curriculum, the activities, the lectures is all online. Next is blended when there is a mix of online and um, the face-to-face. Yeah, so these are the terms on education now. So for me, I just want to focus on homeschooling, but I know you could relate into your digital learning. It's taking the education in a whole new different level. Why I feel that this has taken, edu education has been taken in a totally different sphere because of technology. So we have electronic papers and books. Kids use OneNote for their notes. I used to have notebooks, right? My teacher used to use chalk and on uh, the blackboard. Now kids, you write something on the blackboard or the whiteboard, the kids would just take a snapshot. They would not even bother writing. They use Grammarly to spell check and do grammar. We used to write each and every word. They use tools for math graphs and online. Everything is just online. They access information much faster than we could. They know the news even before you even open and share it because they have access to information. Unlike our time, we have to go to the library. Why is this important? As early as on their formative age, it's important for them to know what we have just discussed about using the digital um, tools in communication, right? Being direct, uh, being focused, intentional, time, your response, you know? using appropriate in information and knowing that everything that is on digital is linked. Next is um, independence and self-worth. Um, for us, choosing into homeschooling and bringing our kids separate from school is because we want to avoid our kids being bullied. Although um, social activities is something that we take full responsibility on. So we help them meet people, uh, their friends and connect with them. I remember my mom used to tell me, uh, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. So these are the biggest influence for my children and your children as well. So um, while I really believe in traditional conventional edu education, 
uh, the, the digital space for education is something that is here to stay. So we teach our kids and how to be independent and working on their own. But they should also know their self-worth because um, even and more, more likely now than ever, um, cyber bullying is happening, right? Know your self-worth. Your children doesn't need to have picture-perfect photos all the time, right? So I see people who feel, kids who feel they have the insecurity because they don't feel good, they, uh, they don't look good, their photos are not nice and stuff. Uh, what's happening? TikTok and, uh, well, we don't bother about these oh. things before, right? So that's important that we, we, we nurture that self-worth so they wouldn't be bothered about what's really, uh, how they are perceived by society if they know what they are worth and how that they are valued in the home. And lastly, I just want to close this one with a quote from Charles Dickens. Electronic communication will never be a substitute of the face-to-face -face of someone who with their soul encourages another person to be brave and true. So um, I hope you guys have uh, learned something and thank you it has thank been a very so productive time thank you so much christine thank you so much it's amazing to see uh, digital space being explored uh, in a disruptive way and uh, focusing on education homeschooling and uh, basically the communication between parental and children everything was covered in a nutshell and i think one hour is not is enough for all these things and we need to discuss separately each subject on a different, different basis. So I think you have covered a lot of things on uh, 25 slides almost uh, in an hour. Fantastic, uh, Christine. Thank you so much. It's an honor to have you. Uh, before going to the audience uh, Q&A, I would like to give the opportunity to Sushma, please, uh, your thoughts on today's session. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Christine, for the wonderful sharings today on uh, digital communications very well uh, designed, very well explained. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here on this platform and letting every one of us know the importance, the drawing the lines, the communication. It's great, great to know you and know your uh, insights on this topic. Thank you. Uh, yes, as Jason said, uh, and you have already well explained that the homeschooling or the uh, working from home has been the trend since past more than a year now and we all have adapted to it well with uh, challenges of course being on work or being on uh, system all the time and drawing the line is so 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 important kids learn from what we do okay? so if we don't stop ourselves how can we expect kids to do the same very Thank well uh, said, uh, Christine. Yes, even at my home, we have a time for TV. My kids cannot watch TV all the time. They don't know the password. I have logged it. I had to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so no choice. But yeah, now they also know. They have understood. And having dinner time with them, having uh, play time before we go to bed. We, we sit and talk sometimes. We play games. And then only we go to bed. That is really so important. It creates that binding within us. Whether we agree or not, it makes a difference. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing what you have shared. That's all from my side. Thank you, Sushma. Before going to Giriji, uh, I would like to share my screen and give you this uh, flowers digitally. Although we are, <laughs> we are discussing on a digital space and thank you so much. Please accept, accept this bouquet from us. Uh, the time is open for the audience. Giriji, you can unmute yourself and start with the Q&A. Uh, Jason, it was a very good, uh, this is Shaji the side. Uh, this was a very good uh, reliving of the- Shaji, Shaji, just a second, uh, just a second. Giri, Giri, Giri Selvraj. Thank you, thank you, Jason. Uh, today, uh, uh, Christine, uh, really, the enthusiasm and the enthusiastic, uh, every time uh, uh, I, I, I came to know the person, how he is very enthusiastic, 
that is the thing i loved your uh, way of uh, face uh, expression and you are very casually speaking with all the powerful uh, powerpoints and the new word today i came to know the sanity definitely i have to uh, go through that sanity word each and everything and the appropriate uh, the, there may be so many things i can learn but my key learning is appropriate uh, because the right information to the right people earlier i talk about water water now now my concept has been changed whether it's a right platform whether i can discuss here uh, like that i learned so many things from this uh, from this session today uh, my thing is actually uh, uh, i am talking about uh, earlier with the water and the energy uh, then i moved to five element concept and then five vertical and five income uh, now the thing is the world is uh, actually they need is vitamin m i think you know the meaning of m no vitamin m tell you know? me more about it what on tell me more about it jerry ji vitamin m is the money this pandemic oh, okay. people are suffering <laughs> for money if the money okay. is, uh, they are having uh, uh, just once uh, two minutes i can discuss when in uh, one patient has been admitted for covid he was almost recovered and then finally the doctor is asking well, another two days you have to uh, stay in the mm. hospital almost paid to 10 lakhs then he has died now only he has paid 7 lakhs again 10 lakh they are charging you see the stress what he has ha- what he had so the vitamin m is actually a need and i have created five vertical and today i came to know there are so many things and finally christine flamina actually i have studied in boys school saint anne's higher secondary school there is one mm-hmm. next school is uh, flamina philomenal so i am connecting with you that school actually that is full for it's a 100% lady school when i was crossing like that i am capturing your name as christine flamenal philomenal thank you thank you for this thank you bye most welcome and thanks for your comment jerry thank you thank you giriji uh shaji you can unmute yourself and ask your question thank you right 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 i just wanted to thank uh, christine for uh, making me relive the corporate experiences what uh, she has given us like uh, i was nostalgic about this uh, during the recession i used to be there in dubai and uh, my 30 to 40% of the staff were philippines okay and i used to be the uh, hr coordinator so oh. uh, the the best part of philippine uh, people or the filipinos were they were really you know uh, open hearted they were kind hearted they were open hearted and they used to understand each other so nicely that I, as a coordinator i used to handle around 3000 to 4000 people um, and they were so communicative like oh can you do this oh can you do that and if i say yes they are happy if i say no they are like okay maybe that he might not have got something like no so they are so understandable but when um, i'm talking about the corporate situation in my company it was totally an indian company and i used to have two bosses i used to have two bosses like one is from uk and one is from india and bosses used to sit across each other's desk like, like or oh, maybe like their uh, their their uh, cabins were like on the left and the right and they will never communicate with each other directly what they used to do is like as christine said that you no know, they'll cc it they'll cc each other one in their department so that what happens is when i have given to this person okay i am i've sent this message to this person let the entire department know that i have done it so what happens is uh, that that's what i said saving my chair saving my as saving my job so it is like they never used to communicate or they never used to feel that what you call it as an internal or coming from the heart or you know personal it is it is nothing uh, nothing for them as a personal thing or they will never think it as uh, it is for our benefit so even if it is from the corporate 
I I never found that attachment when when you say, said that um, you know the bosses are very nice as far as you are concerned the boss was very nice or maybe that he was very good communicator I never had the chance to get a super boss or maybe my MD or my uh, GMs and all those people they were never that kind of a communicator what I used to crave for but. Mm-hmm. my um, management level my subordinates were so much um, like as i said 30 to 40% of uh, the philippines from the philippines and sri lankan they had that ability to understand the communication so nicely and i used to cherish that and that is what i said like you know i was nostalgic about this experience what i had um, just now in one hour i was like wow i i, I was reliving everything and thank you for that that thing to see the pleasure is mine i'm truly totally honored thank you for your comment thank you shadi uh prasad you raised your hand i think i think so you can unmute yourself and uh, talk directly to ms christine or if anybody else would like to share your comments feedbacks or ask any questions you're free to do it we are open for the next one to two minutes before concluding the session Christine thank you so much uh, from the bottom of my heart for accepting our invitation and coming online and sharing your one and a half hours almost uh, with us and uh, thank you it was so much learning we would be seeing you in the future sessions as well uh, with nlg and other areas as well uh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and uh, uh, the, the education i mean the learning was huge the digital space and uh, i think it's going to be Uh, more in the coming days uh, which is, is going to be explored in the in the deepest level thank you so much sushma any closing comments yes that's it thank you thank you christine and thank you audience for being here for being with us every weekend and that's why we are here thank, thank you, you so much. everyone and see bye. you all yeah have a bye. great day bye to everybody bye. thank you christine thank you so much